Welcome to the group critique video for the Eye of David cast drawing. I'm gonna dive into the submissions that I have. I've set them up in Photoshop and we're gonna take a slightly different tack with this group critique than I have in other group critiques. What I wanna get into here, partially because of the nature of this project, is I want to actually take some drawings that are pretty good or in a pretty good place and I want to really push them forward. I wanna I want to improve them mostly with respect to the value rather than the actual design or accuracy because the orchestration of values, the organization of values, the mechanics of the light effect, these are the kinds of things that from cast drawing we need to kind of derive. Without further ado, let's dive into the examples and I'm gonna switch screens right now. So this first cast drawing is, I think, pushed to a pretty good stage. I'm gonna say that because I can see in this kind of the darkest dark expressed, you know, in this little accented area here, that this person has kind of pushed this cast drawing to a place where they feel pretty satisfied. To me, I think it's probably an intermediate stage. We're probably close to wrapping up. And I think also like I can get a sense that, that also this could be somebody who's thinking, all right, I'm here in this three quarter stage. I'm going to push this a little bit forward. And so I want to talk about what needs to happen with the values right now in order to get them to express something that comes a lot closer to what we have in our subject here. So let's get this, you know, looking a lot more like this. And I'm going to go ahead and start to indicate with real values, uh, I think the areas that are going to need to change primarily right in cast drawing that dichotomy between light and shadow is going to be the first challenge that we face partially because we no longer have like an interpretation that is active from Barg to to kind of give us to tell us what the value should be so we need to look at everything inside the shadow and actually determine for ourselves what that's supposed to look like and then depending upon what we're able to do in terms of organizing our shadow the light shape is going to take on also a different sense of dimension uh, because if our shadow values are not dark or unified enough we're not going to have enough room on the value scale in the lights to actually create the light effect that we're looking for so let's identify first on the cast a couple areas that are going to constitute like the lightest light so if we look at the cast here right we can see that this upper left hand corner is pretty much one of the lightest planes that you're going to get to also in this area just below the lower eyelid we have some really really high key lights now just about nothing else in the cast kind of gets to that over here we're pretty light but that's against a couple of dark values surrounding it here we have a light shape but in fact that light shape is not near as kind of light as what we have uh, in this little area here so just bearing in mind with the hierarchy of the lights we have a lot of work to do on on this cast so i'm going to go ahead and you might not even really see while i'm doing this some of the effects that i'm making but what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to eventually once i've made several changes to this I'm going to uh, just show you by flicking back and forth between transparency and in, in the Photoshop layers what changes I've made, right? So you can watch along and kind of see if your eye is really following this, you know, where these changes are, are being made. But bear in mind that also I'm going to, I'm going to zoom out, or not zoom out rather, but I'm going to um, take a moment, I'm going to pause uh, and actually, you know, switch out those layers so you can see really crystal clear what I'm uh, what I'm doing almost there almost there while I'm doing this you can go ahead and like squint down and look at the um, look at the source image for this and try to see for yourself like where would you where would you be changing these where would you be like darkening values you know critiquing other people's work is actually a really great way uh, to kind of gain or, or kind of grasp a sense of of clarity about about how to like see your own work, how to understand ideas properly, right? Because they're probably making mistakes that that you you kind of understand, or at the very least, you're not like emotionally attached to the work, so it's easier for you to to kind of see where those errors are taking place. So go through, you know, on the Discord server or or wherever, you know, you you find people kind of posting their work, um, and just kind of take a look at it and see, you know. Well, what would what would you do differently about that? You know, and 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 you can do that now also with, um, like I said, with this drawing as well. Just take a look at where you think the changes should be in this one. Right. So let's take a quick look at what we got. To me, that represents a kind of dramatic improvement on the expression of values within this drawing. Uh, now. There's more that we can do. 
I, I'm sure that you see it. Um, I see it. There, there's a long way that this can go. Um, but the takeaway that I want you to have, right, uh, is it's about competing values. You can't have light effect, proper light effect, a good, shining, bright, Rembrandt-esque lighting effect if you have competing values in different areas. Let's take a quick look at the drawing before, uh, and I'm gonna mention a few things uh, about it or a few particular areas where I think that's, uh, that's a problem. Going back to this as it is at its kind of inception, right? We have competition everywhere. If we look at these values, they're almost the same as what we have here. If we look at these values, they're almost the same as what we have here. Uh, if we look at these values, once again, competing with that for, for the lightest light. If we look, um, let me just get rid of that. If we look within the eye as well, this is supposed to be our kind of lightest area, right? That is the kind of glowing, you know, light effect in that, in that passage. Uh, but again, we have values everywhere kind of competing with that. So you need to look to your drawing, right? Look at your value organization. Are your halftones competing with your lights in order to, to kind of create that, that bright, that brilliant light effect. In addition to that, right, step back even further. Let's look at the shadows. Are there areas in your shadows that are not allowing your light shape to, to kind of call out for the addition of halftones, right? I would say that the shadows as they're expressed here uh, within, within this area, how they are expressed here, especially how they are expressed here, they're not allowing these areas in the light to kind of require the value that they need to stop competing, right? The light shape isn't popping out. And that's kind of the first stage that you need to get to in order to get your drawing to um, appropriately uh, be prepared for, for the kinds of values necessary to create a good hierarchy of value, a good flow of light, a good light effect. So this is another drawing that I thought would be really interesting to work on. It's actually the same source image that is the one that, that I worked from. So of course, it's, uh, it's quite familiar to me. And I think a lot of you probably chose this one as well. So I wanted to make sure that I did some uh, engagement with, um, with this one as well. We have light coming, of course, from the other side. So uh, we have kind of primary light planes here and then here. And we can see how, how this area, in fact, is like turning back up towards the light source. Um, but that also means then that we have areas like the upper eyelid, which is catching a lot of light. Uh, some areas that are a little bit different from uh, what we had in the other cast. Although that area within the, uh, the center of the eye, within the pupil, in a sense, or the depth of that area that's representing the pupil, uh, is also achieving that, that same kind of sense of brightness. Really quick, let's take a look and see what the, the changes to this one are. Uh, again, maybe not as dramatic as with the other one, but you can see also how what we're doing is like we're focusing that light on coming from that upper right hand side and, and rolling across the form. So as things go left, as things turn away to the left, and I know my camera is kind of mirroring me, so in my hands are going to the right, but you understand. Uh, going from the top right to the left, that's where the, the values are kind of darkening. So when that eye kind of turns to the, uh, the left hand side, uh, you know, as that um, lower eyelid, uh, as it turns under, you know, um, uh, downward from the, the kind of upward facing plane of the lower eyelid or the, the top plane of the lower eyelid, those are the areas that we're kind of keying down. By the way, there's still like a big passage here um, that is actually stopping some of these areas on the, uh, on the right from seeming quite as bright as they should. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to risk a really large kind of glaze over that area and see if I can just pull that off. And I'm going to do that even a little bit more. I'm going to push that further. Um, again, because it's about hierarchy. Uh, and that hierarchy has to be related to kind of a purpose, right? So I'm always talking about the lightest light and the darkest dark in a, in a drawing, right? Is that you, you need to be able to kind of pick those out in order to be able to kind of understand, like, what is the point of a hierarchy and where where is it all headed to, right? And... There can be a thing, I remember this as a student, where you can be a little bit maybe intimidated by the feeling that you have to be so precise in finding the darkest dark and the lightest light. In, in fact, it's, it's not all that specific. You just need to find areas that are significantly lighter or areas that are significantly darker. So, uh, you know, for instance, looking at this, uh, at this cast, I think there are several areas that could be used to represent in a way the lightest light. We have this passage here. 
uh, we have this passage here, uh, we have this passage here, like all of these in a sense uh, can be useful to, to use as a representative lighted slide. Uh, if we're looking for like the area of darkest dark, once again, you can look at some areas that feel like they're kind of competing for that, uh, that opportunity to be like the darkest dark. Uh, these two, for instance, are pretty good candidates. It's not important which one, <laughs> but that basically they represent an overall kind of darkest dark that you can use to kind of gauge, like, let's say, how dark does this shadow here need to be? Well, the answer lies right next to it over here, uh, or the answer could potentially also lie next to it over here. What are those values? This for sure is lighter than what either of those darkest darks are. So we understand this does not need to compete with that. And, and what are we doing uh, just here, by the way, <laughs> as I point this out, uh, those two values are in a sense, a little bit competing with each other. So you wanna, you wanna try to keep those areas that are darkest and lightest as a kind of accent a little bit. Those are the ones that, that, that you push for in the end, or in the case of a, a drawing on white paper, that you preserve that, that white until the end. That is the group critique for this assignment. Uh, these two drawings, I think, expressed a lot of the issues that not only a lot of people are facing or, or are going to face in this project, uh, but also something that is an, an important takeaway from this project. If in cast drawing, you do not figure out how to manage your hierarchy of values to create a light effect, you're not going to be in a good place kind of moving forward into the next projects, right? We're gonna get into advanced projects that are involving white chalk and graphite and toned paper and things. And being able to understand that hierarchy is critical in progressing.